This Tristana player told me about a very common problem he has, and I am convinced that many of you struggle with the same thing. His rank is currently fluctuating between high silver and low gold, and he perfectly described what is keeping him from reaching his goal of breaking into Platinum Elo by saying, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things, I just don't realize what. Hello Greg, and thank you for booking this AD Carry coaching session. For everyone else watching, if you want to get your own coaching video, you can find all the information down in the description. Anyway, Greg, your problem can be made a little more tangible by saying that being good at League of Legends is not one single skill, but rather the sum of many smaller subskills. It is also the reason why you can never give a general answer when someone asks you what they need to do to climb. Any player most likely is comparatively good at some aspects of League of Legends while severely lacking in others, which means what they need to do specifically in order to improve is highly individual. But you, Greg, are about to find out exactly what your personal strengths and weaknesses as a player are, and what you can do right now to get closer to reaching your desired goals. Let's first of all talk about your champion pool. Looking at your profile, it becomes clear that you are not merely a Tristana main, but rather that you also enjoy playing the champion Ash. My advice here is clear. If all you care about is climbing to Platinum as fast as possible, I recommend that you ditch all other champions completely and become a true Tristana one-trick. One-tricking in League of Legends is almost like a cheat code, because you will always have the upper hand in terms of matchup experience, while also being able to commit all your combos and mechanics to muscle memory extremely quickly. However, playing League should still be fun at the end of the day, and I can fully understand if one-tricking doesn't sound like all that much fun to you, and that you'd rather keep Ash in your champion pool. Should that be the case, it is important for you to have a consistent plan that tells you exactly when to pick Tristana and when to pick Ash. Since Tristana is an all-in champion with a highly potent early game, while Ash is more like a late game champion that needs to scale, I recommend that you play Tristana with all-in supports for perfect synergy, and Ash with enchanters and mages. It is always the support who dictates the pace of the lane, as they are way more powerful than an AD carry during the early game, so going for optimal support synergies is an inherent advantage you can get before the game even starts. The three games you've chosen for analysis are all Tristana games, but most of what I have to say will help you in your Ash games as well. However, let me start with something rather Tristana specific. Particularly, your Tristana punish game is absolutely godlike already. In Silver and Gold, and even in Platinum still, many players make very obvious mistakes, and Tristana is the perfect marksman for punishing these mistakes. It also becomes obvious here why Tristana is so good with all-in supports such as Pike. These champions create even more opportunities for your enemies to make mistakes, and with Tristana's WE all-in combo with Hail of Blades, you have one of the strongest early game follow-up tools imaginable. Once that hook connects, you lose no time and immediately pull the trigger. You also seem to be especially aware of Tristana's unparalleled level 2 power spike. Not only do you actively push the wave, you also ping your support to tell them what you're up to. This kind of intentional decisiveness is exactly what Tristana needs to excel. You know your early power spikes with this champion, and you are not afraid to put them to use. But also in less obvious situations, you are still looking for opportunities to catch enemies out of position. You realize that Seraphine is overextended, since you have numbers and level advantage on her, and you react immediately. Again, situations like these are super common, and the fact you are able to see those openings consistently goes a long way. And yes, Tristana is one of the best champions for capitalizing on this, but similar outcomes can be achieved with Ash's ultimate, so your punish game should translate quite effortlessly between these champions. However, I have to say that your punish game could be even better, and this is something that can indeed best be fixed by just one-tricking Tristana. Here, for example, you, again, perfectly follow up on your all-in supports engage combo, and you could easily kill Vayne too by using W O to R and then jumping out of tower range with W's reset. But you apparently forgot Tristana's W reset after killing Seraphine, so in the heat of the moment you waste your flash and then don't even use your ultimate's high base damage to secure the kill. When you finally do remember, it is already too late, and Belveth gets a double kill on you as a consequence, which ultimately lost you the game. Yes, I mean it. This situation right here by itself enabled Belveth's snowball. When you are fully committed to one-tricking a champion, however, you are far less likely to misplay in situations like these, winning you much more games. 
But again, your overall punish game is already extremely strong and you definitely got some nice tricks up your sleeve. You made it look like Pike was in lane all by himself by patiently hiding in the bush, banking on the fact Twitch would greed for farm. Funnily enough though, Pike is too bad to realize what you're doing and blows your cover with his support item, but Twitch is himself too bad to pick up on that subtle a clue. Anyway, you gave your opponent an opportunity to mess up, and as soon as they did, you had your plan ready and executed it. Definitely one of the strongest aspects of your micro game, and something you do not need to worry about. Keep setting up situations like this, and you will win more games. However, there is another aspect of your micro game, or mechanics as they are sometimes called, that is severely lacking and costing you tons of games, possibly without you even realizing. Its impact on your plays is astronomical as you will see in a second, but fixing the issue is surprisingly easy once I tell you how to do it. The play I've just shown you on the screen didn't look like anything too noteworthy, at first glance. When we look a little closer, however, we will see that your E-spell, a huge part of your all-in combo, landed on a minion and not on Lucian, greatly reducing your damage potential. In some situations, this might be mostly inconsequential. Here, you chase after Vayne trying to kill her, and despite your ultimate connecting with red buff instead of Vayne, you still take her down and quote-unquote only lose your cleanse for it. However, in situations where this does end up mattering, the difference can be outright game-losing. Here, you decide to fight a full health late game vein in her minion wave, which is an iffy choice in and of itself with your HP disadvantage, but it could have worked because you have a full extra item on her. Your final auto attack though connects with a minion instead of hitting vein, which is disastrous. Not only do you miss out on the attack's damage itself, but also on an extra E stack. This causes Vayne to survive, and instead of trading one for one with her, she ultimately scores a double kill and you lose the game. But here comes the good news. Fixing this is so straightforward. There is an actual key on your keyboard, which allows you to only hit enemy champions when held down. By default, this command is mapped to your circumflex key right above the tab key. As you can see, holding down this key changes your cursor and turns every right click into a movement command unless you right click on a champion. This will 100% prevent you from auto attacking a minion by accident and it also applies to your spells. So when you press E for example and the enemy is hiding behind tower or between minions, you are guaranteed to still hit them instead of wasting your damage on something else. You should actively practice using this key during fights from now on until it becomes second nature. Once you get the hang of it, the impact on your games will be astounding. Okay, but we also have to talk about the limits of your punish game. As we have already seen in the vein clip, you seem to be quite trigger happy with your engages, and you are definitely showing signs of what I would call the no off switch syndrome. Yes, it is true that Tristana's early game is quite strong and that all in is her preferred playstyle. In this clip, however, I get the impression that you tend to jump in on autopilot instead of properly analyzing the situation beforehand. First of all, you are playing against Lucian Nami, who have perfect synergy with each other and an unparalleled early game damage potential. You, on the other hand, got a Shako support. Shako is rather passive, as he has to rely on playing around his boxes, giving him no follow-ups in potential all-ins. Not only do your champions have much weaker inherent synergy, but you are also one level down, making a fight even less desirable for you. Hard losing the exchange after jumping in under these circumstances should not be a surprise at all. Quite the contrary, you are in fact lucky you got away with your life here. When you learn to actually take the time to evaluate these situations before they escalate, you can save yourself a lot of trouble. Instead of disrespecting the enemy's options and finding out the hard way that you cannot fight them, you are better off staying close to your tower on full health, safely soaking up experience points to scale into the late game. And especially during the late game you should be even more conservative, since every death here can lead to huge power swings. In the worst case scenario, a dead AD carry means a free Baron for the other team, which they can then snowball to victory. With more damage flying around, jumping forward is a much greater commitment for Tristana than during the earlier stages of the game. You are half health here already, and a Riven with a 2 level advantage is extremely scary for you. Jumping on the final E stack is okay, since your jump cooldown will reset anyway once that happens, but then jumping into melee range and putting W on cooldown for good is pure int. The only reason you live there is because Riven is too bad to properly angle her ultimate. 
Tristana's auto attack range during mid and late game is massive, so make use of it. No one is forcing you to use your jump outright. Saving it for the cleanup phase of a fight is much safer and you have all the time in the world to kite from range when you play it more slowly like that. Here for example, you do play it nice and slow. Instead of jumping forward and suiciding into multiple enemies, you are calmly kiting from range. You should always be asking yourself, is jumping a risk I have to take here? Especially in the late game, the answer is oftentimes no. Your range is so massive at that point that there is no need to close the gap, so you can wait with your jump until the enemy is severely weakened and has no counterplay anymore. It is an absolutely brutal tool for cleaning up late game teamfights, so saving your jump for that and relying on your range in all other cases is definitely the way to go. You are a level 14 Tristana with 3.5 items. Literally just auto-attacking Lissandra once or twice from 630 range will kill her. Jumping right into her spells, however, will kill you. We AD carries are highly vulnerable and range is our only asset, keep that in mind. So far so good, but the micro game is of course only one of League of Legends many aspects you need to master if you want to climb. We also have to unpack your macro decision making so you know how you can improve that as well. You probably know the phrase, if it ain't broke don't fix it, and your mid and late game rotations definitely fall under that category. You are very good at identifying where you need to be on the map to maximize your resources, which is a crucial skill to have for any AD carry. After taking down mid lane tower, you do not overstay, but immediately farm your red buff, and then catch the minion's bot lane instead of letting them go to waste. Then you even notice that all the enemies are either dead or on topside, allowing you to push an extra wave, and most crucially allowing you to steal the enemy's jungle camps. You then go back to mid lane to push past river and roam top lane, taking the free scuttlecrab on the way. Finally you collapse on the overextended Kale and recall. Your flawless map awareness and rotations put the enemy very far behind, and I've seen you employ these push past river roam strategies consistently throughout your games. Just letting you know that this is textbook and you can be quite proud of yourself. However, I will make one remark on your mid and late game macro where you still have room to improve. Most of the time you are aware of the theoretically optimal play, but you don't seem to know how to react when your team acts stupid and refuses to follow suit. Let me show you what I mean. In this clip you collapse on two overextended enemies and beat them with numbers advantage. Following this event you correctly spam ping Baron as you notice that this most valuable objective is completely free for you to take right now. Unfortunately though, Nasus doesn't seem to be exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer and completely ignores your good call. With Nasus out of the picture he cannot take Baron at all and trying to do so now suddenly turns from a game winning play into a potentially game losing one. Had you quickly re-evaluated the situation instead of desperately clinging to your original plan, you could have simply taken down mid lane tower together with your other teammates which was completely free. This would have allowed you to at least get some good mileage despite Nasus' misplay instead of completely wasting your time near the Baron pit. Playing textbook mid game macro is a very important first step, but once you are also able to spontaneously react in ways that allow you to salvage your allies potential misplays, you can take your macro game to the next level. However, I am by no means saying that you should by default distrust your teammates. Quite the contrary, you should be fully trusting them to do their job until proven otherwise. This is definitely something that is currently holding you back from what I can see. In this clip for example, Lucian catches you somewhat off guard, but Ramus is still next to you, and with him by your side the situation should be no problem. However, because you do not trust him to watch his screen, you end up wasting your jump and more importantly your flash when you could have simply turned and killed Lucian 2v1. Yes, I get that this is scary if you don't fully trust your teammate, which is fair enough. But as a solid mid ground play, you could have simply exhausted Lucian which is far smaller a commitment than burning your flash here. In general, a little more decisiveness can go a long way for you. Numbers advantage is a huge deal in League of Legends, but instead of auto attacking as Lilia walks into your attack range 1 vs 3, you are too scared to actually hit her and instead waste your W to jump away. By effectively ditching your teammates instead of trusting them to fight alongside you, you create a huge opening for Lilia which ultimately leads to Shaco's death. So be more decisive and, all memes aside, treat the game as an actual 5 vs 5 showdown with actual smart humans. Anyway, while you definitely know your rotations in the mid and late game, there is one aspect of your macro that needs drastic work. 
I'm talking about your back timings, and more specifically your back timings during the early game. You need to have a clear plan in mind that tells you when it is optimal to base so you can actually maintain an advantage and don't end up giving your enemies resources for free. Because this is exactly what happens when you base too early for no clear reason. Right here for example, you base way too early, giving your lane opponents free farm while also putting your support in a very awkward position. You have full health, full mana and no good purchases with only little gold, which are all indicators that you should stay on the map right now. You could be pushing and pressuring Vayne with your level advantage, further extending your lead. By basing here though, you actually give up your level advantage voluntarily, as Vayne farms for free now and you lose gold and experience to your tower. Even worse, Swain is now in a 1v2 situation, which makes it very likely for him to make a mistake and die, which luckily for you does not end up happening here. But the situation nonetheless just got a lot worse for you, simply because you based at the wrong time. Look at all the minions going to waste. On the other end of the spectrum, you sometimes base way too late, which also creates unnecessary risks. Here you get a strong pick on the enemy support with your jungler, and then you correctly shove in the wave until it crashes into the enemy tower, since no one can stop you from free farming. Basing right after would be perfectly fine, so you can match the enemy bot lane again who have just been in base themselves and spent their gold. However, you instead go for a gank in mid lane, which only works by the way because Lissandra has the map awareness of a bat. The longer you stay on the map though, the riskier it gets for you, so now is definitely the latest point in time at which you should base. Yet instead, you try to contest Dragon against a freshly reset enemy bot lane and a hyperfed enemy Belveth. Unsurprisingly, your jungler dies for this and you lose the Dragon, and on top of that you are now stuck in lane with inferior items. In silver and low gold, you might get away with base timings like these every now and then, but if you want to be able to compete with platinum players, you have to make sure you don't fall behind on the power curve. The optimal base timing is A. You kill your enemy, shove the wave into the tower and recall as they respawn, or B. You come out ahead while trading and the enemy is low on health and bases voluntarily. Then you still shove in the wave and recall, so you still return to lane almost at the same time as they do, but with superior items. The AD carry who bases first is always at a disadvantage, and the AD carry who doesn't base at all is also at a disadvantage. Force your enemy out of lane, shove the wave into tower, and then base yourself. It is the foundation of how optimal base timings work, and once you have that down, your gameplay will be much more consistent. Okay Greg, I know that was a lot of input, but fortunately you can re-watch this coaching video and its individual parts as often as you like. I hope I was able to fix your issue of not knowing what you don't know, and that my advice will help you to achieve your dream rank. If you still have questions, or if anything in the video was unclear, feel free to just ask me and I will do my best to clarify. For everyone else watching, if you want your own coaching, you can book one in the video description, and for more information on how it works exactly, just click the link on your screen right there.